What is up guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 build. Today's build will focus on aerial denial in PvP via the exotic young Ahamkara Spine Gauntlets. And to show you the true power of the Tripmine Grenades when placed correctly as they do not get the love they deserve. The idea here is to build random bait players in the charge at you, who will be easily dispatched the moment our trip mines are triggered, and if that isn't enough then we can follow up with our knife to potentially one shot them, or use both our primary and secondary for a wombo combo special. Doing this via our top 3 subclass and charge with light mods, we can create an infinite amount of grenades and throw knives pretty much all the time, and can stop movements in certain areas to create what I like to call a kill box. The way it's designed should not only allow you to counter aggressive mobile and shotgun grenade players, but also stasis players who rely on glacial grenades to get a wide amount of damage and bonuses from their whispers. The build will place an end to that, slightly, and make it easier for you to win 1v1s. It will also be helpful for predicting players' routes and getting the catch on to other players as well. So with that covered, the subclass we will be going with is the Way of the Outlaw for the main use of Proximity Knives and Chain of Woes. When using the Young Ahamkara Spine, this subclass is considered the best to combine with when you want to utilize Tripmine Grenades and Proximity Knives for a very effective Wombo combo. Both of these two when combined can allow you to prevent players from entering areas or shutting down control points, and can allow you to also one-shot numerous players who get hit by both of them at the same time, as your trip mines will go from a 140 to 160 thanks to the exotic bonus, and our explosive knives can finish up from there. This here is pretty much the setup that we'll be rocking with, but we'll also be adding in the child like mods and ability-based mods to further enhance the regen rate of our abilities. From there we also have the Chain of Woes perk which is a fantastic perk to have if you're maining hand cannons as it will increase the weapon reload speed and our teammates reload speed as well. The build here will be using a 120 hand cannon which is known for their slow speed, but with the recent buff to them, landing precision shots and activating Chain of Woes will fix that issue depending on how accurate you are. If you are also using a hand cannon with the Demolitious perk as well, then you can get a very nasty combo going as well. The other two perks will be useful when we activate our super, and I found that the 6 shot perk is very powerful when taken on large groups of players or worse, facing against a behemoth titan who requires 2 shots to kill in mid super. This is excellent for shutting them down and still have enough super left over to take on anyone else around. For the grenades we will be using the trip mines as they are the only type to work with the exotic gauntlets. Trip mines are very powerful when used correctly and tossed in the right environment, as they can tag multiple people at once which can damage or outright kill them. Either one will cause the player to panic and act reckless which works in our favour. For the weaponry I would recommend you use a 120 hand cannon with demolitionist and a secondary with some kind of reach to it, something that can easily weaken them and then be cleared up via your grenades. My primary is the true prophecy hand cannon with rangefinder and demolitionist and this is a vault I've had in my vault for a very long time and I've just been waiting for a good time to actually use it. The buff to 120s have made them not only lethal to use, but also incredibly powerful when you have a version that focuses on both stability and range, as you can easily match someone at scout rifle ranges and promptly free tap them like it's nothing. Now I was originally going to go with the Monte Carlo to boost my melee regenerate, so I could 100% have my knives ready whenever I like them, and then back it up with high discipline or a secondary shotgun or sidearm with the demo perk, However, I soon realised that my grenades are the main focus of the build and they do a lot more damage compared to my knives. They also have a much longer duration and radius thanks to the exotic gauntlet trait which allows them to be more useful the longer they're out. This is why I decided to use a 120 for finalisation of the build as 120s are great for mopping up players from full or half health and as trip mines are a 50-50 in terms of who gets injured and who outright dies, this can allow me to easily mop them up via a body shot or headshot, since the damage should be enough to achieve this. Of course, if you're a new player who doesn't have a 120 like this with the demo perk, then any weapon with the perk should be fine to use, or if you want to do the opposite and have more strength available, then the Monte Carlo is a great pick to choose and use. For secondary, I'm using the Truth Teller with Phil Prep and Demolitionist, and grenade launchers as of now have been very quiet from a lot of people since the reign of Mountaintop, and from past experience, it seems like a sudden removal of mountaintop has caused a kind of shock to those who don't know how to time their shots compared to them just nailing you with no thought. In this build, you will need to learn how to at least nail most of your shots if you wish to succeed with it, 
and you don't need to be a pro at it. You just need to know how to detonate your shot to weaken said players and then finish with your hand cannon or grenades. You see, grenade launchers and 120 hand cannons are a match made in heaven when paired, as you can weaken someone with your grenade launcher and then follow up with your hand cannon for a tidy one shot. This here will allow you to keep players at bay who try to challenge you. It can also work well when paired with your trip mines, as you can use your grenade launcher to activate your grenades, to which it should be enough from both blasts to one shot anyone caught within it. Of course, this may not always work, but it's very effective, I found, when trying to enter areas that has an enemy just around the corner and waiting for me. Use my trip mine to weaken them and then use my grenade launcher to bounce its round off the surface of a corner to catch them off has worked out really well for me compared to anything I've used before and is also incredibly safe compared to using a shotgun and charging in. For heavy, I've gone with the Avengers memory grenade launcher with sticky grenades, clown cartridge and auto and holster. From the perks, you can tell straight away that I plan to use it for catching players off who go to certain areas or for comboing with my grenades and setting up traps. To be honest, it won't see a lot of usage since heavy tends to be a death warrant at times and the stick grenades also have a small duration and radius to them, so their effectiveness can be very low at times. But when they work, they really do work. For our stats, our focus should be the melee stats, so we can have a high passive recovery rate when we're not in action. Now if you have the Monte Carlo and the ability based mods, then this area won't need to be high and can stick around to the 50 to 60 ranges as passively. This combined with the Monte Carlo perk will be enough for you to constantly gain melee back at a reasonable level. If you don't have the Monte Carlo like shown, then I would advise you to push your stat to a max of 80 for a 41 second cooldown, which should be more than enough for you to consistently get melee back as you naturally play. Plus, ability mods will also help push recovery even more. After that, your next focus should be the discipline area for a faster grenade regeneration, and I would recommend you keep this in the 50 to 60 areas, as both weapons we have will be using the Demonicious Perk all the time. The last point to focus in would rival between intelligence or mobility, and you can split this so both areas get something or focus on one specific stat, but remember, you have limited points at this end, so choose wisely. For armor pieces, you will need a mix of solar and arc affinity to slot in charge of light, high energy fire, and most importantly, the radiant light mod, which will be helpful for both your stats and your allies who rely on charge with light. For your exotic, no specific affinity is required unless you want it to correspond with your weapon, but for newer players, I would say go with a arc affinity so you can slot in the momentum transfer perk that will reward your melee energy every time you damage someone with your grenades. Now for the mods, here's what we have and this should be fairly simple for you to get on your end. If not, you can mix and match and see what you get from there. So for head, we have strength, hand cannon targeting, ashes to assets and charged up mod. Arm, we have mobility, grenade launcher loader, hand cannon dexterity mod. Chest, we have minor strength, grenade launcher reserves and taking charge mod. A leg, we have strength, absolution, invigoration and radiant light mod. Cloak we have Distribution, Bomber and High Energy Fire mod. Young Ahamkara Spine has always been a good exotic to many players. Not the best or most wanted, but good, since it does what it's described and any decent player can pick this up and use it in PvP like nothing. Now there are better exotics for PvP that players will use instead, but Spine is very good with Top Tree Gunslinger, as we can make use of the explosive knives and trip mines to one-shot majority of players under 5 zillions or place them into critical to which they'll shortly die after from us. As a crucible is currently full of stasis users, now is actually a great time to use them as players from each side will be freezing each other on and off which makes easy pickings for the grenade. But Glacier users aka Shattered Dive Hunters and the Slip Slide Titans won't be aware of what's on the other side of the glaciers until they smash them. This is where our wombo combo will come in. Using our radar and map knowledge, we can control areas of interest by baiting players into specific areas and then use our grenade to trap them and kill them there and then. Upon getting a kill with a grenade, we will also get ability grenade energy back which seems to vary upon how many are taken out, but this won't matter much as using our abilities mods and the demolitionist perk, we can get a near max amount back to land another trip mind, which I must say, thanks to the young Ahankara spine, can allow my grenades to be more lethal in duration, radius and damage and even better for locking down areas. To keep up with the Wombo combo, we will need adding quite a bit of strength to our melee for a consistent combo being available. 
which is what we have done here via our mods and the Radiant Light bonus stat point. We also have our primary that can weaken or finish players off from either 3 to 2 tap depending if I'm charged with light, and my secondary is also useful for forcing group players to spread out, which for my knives and grenades can allow me to pick them off without them even knowing they are moving it into a pre-made trap. Its use is very effective against aggressive, mobile, stasis and shotgun ape users on perfectly small group maps like Javelin, and this is why I found its great usage as a counter against the common loadouts. In many ways I created a build for new or average players who just want to counter the aggressive builds that are vampire in PvP but don't have a specific loadout available. This setup will allow making follow up shots more consistent on your end. Now as the setup is effective, it doesn't always work in your favour against said players all the time. The one downside to this build is that players can shoot the sticky grenade depending on the angle it is on, which as they do basically mean you've lost your wombo for your combo. But secondly, if a player moves fast enough, they can actually avoid the blast of the grenade. This against a behemoth or top tree dawnblade who know what they're doing can lead to disaster on your end. You also have to be aware of the angle that you throw your grenades at times, as most objects have wonky angles that won't make them accurate for you. Of course, the downsides are negatable, as you can easily recover with a good cooldown and using your abilities at perfect timing. The build overall is average at best and great for area control and shutdowns, but as everything is being relied upon your one grenade, it can lead to risky situations to where you may or may not net your kill. Still, for new players or players who want to shut down aggressive players, it's definitely worth using if you know what you're doing and it's honestly great until some other type of counter against stasis is then shown. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, the link is down below. But once again thanks for stopping by and I'll see you on the next one.